time of Eric the Red and Leif Erikson to the present, the exploration of the unknown parts of the world has held a particular fascination for the Scandinavians. The Vikings visited China centuries before Marco Polo, and Leif Erikson set foot in the New World quite a long time before Columbus. And the name Amundsen is an important part in the history of polar exploration. All brave men who venture into uncharted waters or who cross unmapped lands, sooner or later make this discovery. There are two worlds. The known world which can be mapped and charted and that other world which lies just beyond the map makers. Our story begins here in the home of Felix Bogner, geography teacher. Marta, the door. Yes? Dr. Hansen. And you're Mr. Borkner? Yes. May I come in? Of course. Thank you. What am I thinking? Please forgive me. It is just a, a surprise seeing so famous a man as yourself here in Hamburg. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Please. May I ask, what brings you to Hamburg? I came to see you. Me? Uh, you are Felix Borgner, teacher of geography of the common school. Yes, but does it concern the letter I wrote to the academy, suggesting that more courses of map making be... No, it concerns your son. I have no son. He's dead. Yes, Eric is dead. You know his name. I knew him, Mr. Bogner. You... Felix, was that the bell? I was sweeping the carpet. Oh. Uh, may I introduce you to my wife, Mrs. Bogner? This is Dr. Anna Hansen. The Dr. Hansen? Yes. Oh. Does that distress you? No, no. It's, it's only that my boy, my Eric, Oh, he idolized you so. If he could have seen you. He did. That is why I am here. Oh, but... It... Yes, but... Please, go ahead, Dr. Hansen. May I smoke? Oh, yes, please do. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. As you know... Our expedition into the Sahara began disastrously. Our supplies were late in arriving, and as a result, we had difficulty in getting a guide because it was nearly the beginning of the sandstorm season. West of Arawan, the wind began to rise. Of the ten in our party, seven decided to return to our base. That left Professor Anderson, Gus Karpus, and myself. We had a native guide and a camel. We decided to press on toward Kifa. The next evening. Kasim! and has just resigned his position as guide. Why, Anderson? Why? Because he's a fool. I, uh, I only meant to frighten. I... And likewise, our faithful camel. I hope you realize the position your bright young professors put us in now. Well, do you intend to stand here all night, Doctor? What do you suggest, Gus? Go after the camel, of course. On foot? 
And what do you suggest, Doctor? Are we supposed to wait until the sand covers his tracks? He's right, I know. I don't look forward to the walk. You too can stay here if you like. But where we are now, all your money, all your glory, won't get us more water when we need it. Thank him. He saved your life. I'll take care of my own life. Once the sun came up, he would not last three hours without water. You should know that, Gus. So we wait here until we die, is that it? But we last longer because we're near the water bag, is that it? <laughs> not me. I'm going. We go together. Well, not tonight, though. Why not tonight? Now listen. Wind is coming up. We've got to move our shelter to the east side of that dune, and now, by morning, there's going to be a sandstorm. Are you sure the wind will blow the same way all night, Doctor? It's a waste! Who are you to tell me? Uh, water's going to have to last us a long time. Take your hands off me. I guess. That's going to be shared. Shared alike. No extra rations. Agreed? Agreed. Gus! Everything looks so different. And there was a hill there. You can't use sand dunes for landmarks, Professor. No. I like the ocean waves. But those do not change. I will do our walking at night. We stayed on that cluster. I'll start getting out the equipment. All right. Why, West? Well, why not? It's impossible to go back. We keep going in one direction. We. We come to a well, an oasis, a caravan. Or we might not. That's right. We might not. For ten days, we walked by night, carrying with us the food and water that were all that stood between us and starvation, and the canvas that offered us a measure of shelter from the cruel heat that made daytime movement unthinkable. Distance is hard to estimate in the desert. By my own rough calculations, we had traveled perhaps 50 miles toward help, we hoped. Away from it, I feared. In any event, our situation was becoming worse. It was necessary to reduce the ration from one biscuit per day and a cup of water to one half that amount. You were becoming weaker. Finally, just before dawn, on the tenth day. What are you stopping for? We've still got an hour before light. We're going to gamble at last hour. Gamble? On what? Shut up, Nifty. Don't talk to me. Be quiet, both of you. Got to get help. Mm -hmm. On top of a little rise. The fire can be seen a mile. I've been saving. Possession box. It makes you think anybody will see it. For nothing? But it is possible. Caravan, another explorer. 
Even some nomadic native. <laughs> and if this nomadic individual does sit, can you say for sure he'll come and investigate? No. But I can say for sure what will happen to us if he doesn't. And it was there, sir, that I first met your son. He knew the desert as no man has ever known it. Its topography, geological structure, and its history. And he told us that we were wrong to go west, that there was a well 40 miles to the south. When he sighted an ancient Phoenician geographer who had described the well, we did not think to question him. We simply did as he suggested. Gus! of the sun. And look at these markings. It's Babylonian. It's just as you said, Eric. You've saved this. Not I. I relied on what Daxis wrote nearly 30 centuries ago. Eric. Eric, how far from here to the well? Two miles. Three, perhaps. Even in this heavy sand, we should make it by dawn. If we get started. Yeah. Gus! Come. so far. It's his fault. He told us to go south. He's killed us all a murderous fool. Oh, yes. It's no one's fault. Eric. Daxis came here from what he called the Lake of the Camels. So 3,000 years ago, there was a lake. There was also a well. And 500 years later, Herodotus spoke of the animal's watering place. If that lake lasted for five centuries, perhaps it lasted for 30 centuries. Where? Further south. How much further south? I don't know. Perhaps 60 miles. Perhaps a hundred. Perhaps a thousand. We need not give up. If we reduce the water ration... The water ration? <laughs> it's reduced. <laughs> I drank it. I drank almost all of it while you fools was holding your celebration at the tower. Why not? He was cold to the well. I was so dry inside. Why doesn't somebody say something? 
Why was there somebody safe? Too bad. It wasn't our fault. Bad luck. Bad luck. I find you more water. I find you more water. I find you more water. More water. Gus. Gus. I can hardly remember what followed. I knew we headed south again. On a ration of one ounce of water per man per day. In the end, it was Eric whose strength failed. Do you want some water? It's not time. Oh, please. Take mine. I had more than my share before. Your body doesn't remember that. Please. Don't make me waste my strength arguing. I want to talk to Dr. Hansen. Eric, I would like you to forgive me. He wants to talk to you. All right. Doctor, in case I don't make it. You will. In case. The devil's body. The devil's body still has water. The map. Follow the map carefully. I will. Doctor, remember my name. I told you my father teaches geography in the village school of Arenberg. I would like to meet him someday. You will. Tell him what happened. We will. We all will. I including you, Eric. We'll go together. Perhaps, Doctor. Now, get some sleep. You too, Doctor. what he decided was right. He never reproached Gus, who drank the water that might have saved him. He might be here in Arenborg now, if he is. He's alive. My son died last summer, September 9th, 1910, at the age of, how do you know the date? At the age of 22. You never let eyes on my boy in his entire life. Do you think I'd make up a story like this? Felix, whatever this is, I believe he has told the truth. But how can it be possible? Perhaps some other boy who used Eric's name for some reason. Perhaps. But it wasn't Eric. This is our friend and doctor, Henrik Swanson. He brought Eric into this world. He took care of him all his short life. I want him to tell. Tell him, Henry. From the beginning, the boy suffered from a spinal disorder. At about age six, a progressive paralysis set in, affecting at first only the lower part of his body. At the age of 12, he lost the use of his legs. He never regained his power to walk. What? For the last ten years of his life, Eric Bogner never left that bed. But, but it is impossible. So I am here. Gus and Anderson are alive. 
So we are the living proof. May I say something? What Dr. Swanson has said is true. And yet, not true. Now, Mrs. Bogner, I, I, I do not follow you. I... His body was confined. But his spirit was free. It wasn't his spirit that walked with us. His books took him everywhere. To China with Marco Polo. Around the world with Magellan. He called himself an explorer. Yes, Eric's poor body never left that bed. But Eric himself? Eric was an explorer. What Dr. Hansen says he saw is impossible. Who supplied us with the information that saved our lives? The desert, a strange thing. Couldn't it have been a sort of mass hallucination? The others respected you as their leader. They believed what you believed. Is it impossible that they saw what you saw by some process akin to hypnosis? No, Doctor. Scientifically, it is not possible. No. May I speak to you for a moment, Doctor? Of course. Will you excuse me? Glad for you. What? Because in time you will be able to believe completely my explanation that it all was a mirage after all. But what about me? I mean, you have answered something which has caused me many sleepless nights. Doctor, what do you mean? On the death certificate, I wrote natural causes. I dared not write on it what he really died of, because, well, it was medically impossible. Doctor, what did he die of? In this room, in this bed, with a pitcher of water beside him on this table, Eric died of dehydration. Thirst. Thirst. As though he were in the middle of a desert. Now, Doctor, is there a picture of the boy? Yes. He was in the desert. Doctor, don't ask me how, but he was. Perhaps the doctor's first theory was right. Perhaps Einar Hansen and his companions only imagined that which they said they saw. Mass hallucination, too much heat, hysteria, too little water. Perhaps. But what about the way Eric died? Well, I'm sure we can think of something logical, can't we?